A poor guy pretended to be the son of a millionaire to impress a girl, but when she found out he was penniless at the wedding. Leandro was a graduate student and a promising young scientist. His father did not earn much and had no connections. The young man achieved everything on his own. He received a scholarship as a student, then defended his thesis brilliantly, and was offered to continue his studies. Leandro gladly agreed. He studied the latest technologies, robots, and the possibilities of artificial intelligence. Leandro spent most of his time at the university. Often, he stayed there late and went straight home to sleep after work. Occasionally, on Fridays, Leandro met with old friends. The guys would go to a bar or walk along the large pedestrian avenue in the city center. This Friday, one of Leandro's friends invited him to an elite nightclub where a concert of a famous and very popular youth band was taking place. The entry was expensive, but the guys decided it was a rare chance to listen to the band live and bought tickets. There were a lot of people in the club. Leandro noticed that most guests were wealthy and dressed in stylish clothes. Leandro himself came in a regular checkered shirt and black pants, the same he wore to work at the university. He and his friend Matteo took drinks and eagerly awaited the start of the concert when Leandro suddenly noticed a beautiful girl at one of the tables. She had dark skin and smooth black hair that reached her waist. The girl was wearing a bright pink satin dress that flowed around her slender figure, making her look like a graceful butterfly. Leandro wanted to meet her, but saw that the girl was very wealthy. Where are you looking all the time? Matteo wondered, having noticed that Leandro wasn't listening to his story. Leandro didn't want to say, but his friend followed his gaze. Do you like that girl? Matteo chuckled. Leandro just nodded in response. I see she's obviously not poor, Matteo commented. Yeah, I'm not her match, Leandro sighed. Tell her you're a millionaire's son, Matteo suggested with a laugh. Leandro smiled, understanding that Matteo was just joking. Suddenly, he saw that the girl in the pink dress was looking straight at him. Did you see that? Leandro asked Matteo, amazed. Matteo patted his friend on the shoulder. Yes, she smiled at you. It looks like she likes you. Matteo exclaimed. What should I do? Leandro asked nervously. Of course, go and introduce yourself. Matteo replied confidently. However, Leandro still hesitated. Maybe she wasn't looking at me, he clarified. Matteo looked him in the eyes. Of course, she was looking at you. He assured his friend and, giving him a gentle push, added with a laugh, Go on, your fate awaits you. Leandro headed toward the girl, carefully making his way through the crowd of young people. Approaching her table, he smiled and asked, May I sit next to you, senorita? He asked politely. The girl smiled back and, nodding, said, I'm waiting for a friend, but while she's not here, you can keep me company. Leandro sat down and introduced himself. My name is Beatrice, the girl said, coquettishly tucking a strand of hair behind her ear. What a beautiful name. Leandro smiled. What do you do, Beatrice? I work as a translator in my father's international company. And you, Leandro, she replied. The young man hesitated for a moment, not knowing what to say. After all, he was just a graduate student. Finally, Leandro decided and said, I do research in the field of the latest technologies. It's sponsored by my father's company, which is very wealthy. Having said this, Leandro gulped. It seemed to him that everything he said sounded more than false. However, Beatrice seemed not to notice anything. Oh, how interesting. You must really like your job. Leandro nodded, feeling sweat break out on his forehead. Why did I lie to her? He asked himself mentally. Of course, Leandro knew the answer. He wanted to impress the girl. At that moment, Beatrice's friend ran up to the table, out of breath. She was also very beautifully and richly dressed. I see you are not bored without me. The girl raised her eyebrows in surprise. Beatrice smiled at her charmingly. This is my new acquaintance. His name is Leandro. Leandro, this is my friend Leah. 
Nice to meet you, the young man muttered. He realized it was time for him to return to Mateo. Can I have your phone number, Beatrice? Leandro asked the girl. She smiled and dictated her number. The young man smiled and quickly returned to his friend. At this very moment, the musicians took the stage and the concert began, so Leandro didn't have time to tell Mateo anything. For a while, he forgot about what had happened to the music captivated him entirely. But when the final chord sounded, Leandro caught Beatrice's gaze again. She smiled at him and, nodding, headed for the exit with her friend. Leandro exhaled noisily. Did you manage to get her number? Mateo asked, patting his friend on the shoulder. I did, Leandro replied. Mateo looked at him in surprise. Why don't I hear joy in your voice, he wondered. In response, Leandro told him everything. So you used my idea after all? Mateo laughed good-naturedly. So, now you're of noble blood? A rich man's son. Leandro lowered his head in embarrassment. I don't even know what came over me. It just slipped out, the young man confessed. Mateo patted him on the back encouragingly. Don't worry. All's fair in love and war, he exclaimed and added, everything is going perfectly. Leandro wanted to believe him, but his conscience screamed the opposite. The young man had always been honest and decent, and he didn't want to start a relationship with a girl with a lie. Tomorrow I'll meet her and tell her everything, he decided to himself. The next day, Leandro called Beatrice and invited her on a date. They met in a beautiful park in the city center, where there were many fountains and greenery. The girl wore a beautiful white polka dot dress that suited her very well, and she braided her hair. Leandro wore his best suit, which his parents gave him for his university graduation. The evening was hot, dragonflies flew back and forth, and the air was filled with the pleasant scent of flowers. Leandro was so charmed by Beatrice's beauty that he completely forgot about his good intentions. Their conversation flowed easily and naturally, the young people had many common interests. Leandro even felt as if they had known each other for a long time. The young man and the girl walked among the fountains for a long time, enjoying each other's company, and then Leandro invited Beatrice to dinner. He took her to an expensive restaurant he had never been to before and decided to pay with a credit card. The elegant waiter led them to a free table in the center of the hall, and everyone turned to look at the young couple. Judging by everyone's admiration, we look good together, Beatrice said cheerfully and a little arrogantly. Leandro understood that she was proud of her beauty and status and wanted a matching man by her side. He wistfully remembered his lie, but quickly pushed these thoughts away so as not to spoil the evening for himself. The waiter brought the menu, and when Leandro saw the prices, his eyes nearly popped out of his head. He had not expected the dishes in this restaurant to be so expensive. Beatrice didn't notice anything. She was engrossed in examining the menu. I hope she's not too hungry, the young man thought gloomily about the girl. But, recalling how long they had walked in the fresh air, he realized it was impossible. His own stomach was already growling. The young man chose the cheapest dish and drink on the menu for himself and ordered a lobster dish with chef's sauce, a signature salad, and an expensive wine for Beatrice. The girl raised an eyebrow in surprise when she saw what the waiter brought Leandro. I'm on a diet, the young man quickly said, stammering as he added, I, I actively play sports, and my coach asked me not to overeat in the evenings. This time Beatrice nodded understandingly, and the young people began to eat. Leandro couldn't taste the food because his conscience was stirring again. He scolded himself for lying so much. What a wretch I am, Leandro thought sadly. He knew this couldn't go on, but the deceit was pulling him in deeper. One day everything would be revealed, and Leandro didn't even want to think about it. After dinner, they sat at the table for a while, chatting about various topics, and then the young man asked the waiter for the bill and paid with his card. Beatrice was very pleased with the evening. She beamed with a joyful smile as they left the restaurant. This calmed the young man a little. At least she's satisfied, he thought. Maybe I'm over-dramatizing. I need to take life more lightly, like Matteo does. 
Thinking this, Leandro called a taxi to take Beatrice home. When the car stopped in front of a luxurious mansion, the young man's jaw literally dropped. You live here, he asked, helping the girl out of the taxi. Yes, Beatrice replied, looking at him innocently. Do you like it? It's a very beautiful house, Leandro admitted. Beatrice smiled slyly and noted, probably your house is even more beautiful because, as I understand, your father is wealthier than mine. Leandro shook his head. No, we have the most ordinary house. No golden statues at the entrance and no white columns, he replied. My father doesn't like to show off his wealth. Beatrice nodded respectfully. I see. That's commendable, she remarked. With these words, she hugged the young man and kissed him on the cheek. Thank you for a wonderful evening, she whispered and, smiling one last time, went into the house. Leandro stood in place for a while, smiling like a madman, then walked home on foot. He didn't have any money left, not even for the bus. The next day he sent Beatrice a message wishing her a good morning, and she immediately replied. The young people began a lively correspondence. Eventually, they agreed to meet in the evening and go to the movies. Leandro called Matteo and asked to borrow some money. If I'm not mistaken, he responded sarcastically, I'm speaking to the son of a millionaire. And he laughed heartily. Hearing his laughter, Leandro was ready to sink into the ground. Yes, I understand the situation is contradictory, but I can't help it, he began to justify himself. I think I'm head over heels in love with Beatrice. Mateo whistled. Oh, brother, you disappoint me. Just because you're in love doesn't mean you should throw money to the wind and go into debt. But she thinks I'm from a rich family. For her, money is nothing. Leandro exclaimed in despair. But it's not the same for you, brother, Mateo reasonably noted. You should tell her the truth. Leandro broke into a sweat. Tell the truth? But she won't want to see me anymore. I don't want to lose her, he exclaimed. I understand, Matteo replied and added sarcastically, then be ready to say goodbye to your last pair of pants. At that, the conversation ended, the old friend agreed to lend Leandro money, but warned that it was the last time. Leandro thanked Matteo sincerely and ran to get ready for the date. This time he put on a white shirt and new jeans he had never worn before. When Leandro approached the cinema, Beatrice wasn't there yet. He texted her, and the girl replied she would be there soon. A couple of minutes later, a luxurious Mercedes Maybach pulled up to the building, and his beloved easily stepped out. She wore a long silk skirt and a pearl satin top that beautifully highlighted her light gray eyes and matched her tan skin perfectly. Beatrice let her hair down and wore a thin headband. Leandro was so captivated by the girl again that he forgot everything. Shall we watch the film? She asked slyly, and the young man hurriedly led her inside. They bought tickets, popcorn, and soda. The movie turned out to be very funny and romantic, and at the end, it was so touching that Beatrice even cried. Leandro was surprised that she was so sensitive, but he liked it. He realized he was truly in love with Beatrice. This thought both pleased and saddened the young man. He still couldn't forget about his lies, but now he didn't know how to confess everything to his beloved. So they continued to meet. Each time Leandro wanted to tell Beatrice the truth, but constantly postponed it. He found a part-time job in a private scientific laboratory to afford to take his beloved to various places, cafes, restaurants, concerts, theaters, and cinemas. The young people grew more attached to each other and could no longer imagine life apart. One day Leandro realized he wanted to marry Beatrice and began to think about how to impress her with a spectacular proposal. He shared his thoughts with Matteo, who responded with the following, Interesting, with what money do you plan to have the wedding? Did you suddenly get rich? Or maybe your distant uncle conveniently passed away and left you a fortune. Mateo's arched eyebrow and sarcastic tone brought Leandro back to earth. The old friend was right. The young man didn't have the money to throw a lavish wedding, which Beatrice probably dreamed of. What should I do? Leandro asked, but Mateo just shrugged. You should have thought about it earlier, 
he replied gruffly. But Leandro didn't get offended. Mateo was right. He was to blame for everything. Lies never bring happiness. With these gloomy thoughts, Leandro went home. He sat at his computer to write a scientific article for his university department when suddenly he received an email. It was an invitation to participate in a grant competition for young professionals. Leandro carefully read the email and his face lit up. If I win the grant, I can pay for the wedding, he thought. Wasting no time, the young man wrote a cover letter and applied for participation. Within half an hour, he received confirmation his application was approved. Leandro finished writing the article and called Beatrice with a proposal to go for a walk. The girl happily agreed. Over the next three months, Leandro devoted all his free time to working on the grant. He hardly slept, making him look pale, which greatly worried Beatrice. To calm her down, Leandro told her about the grant, omitting only the reason why he decided to participate in the competition. Beatrice was impressed, but asked her beloved to take care of himself. She treated Leandro with great care and understanding. Finally, the decisive day came when the competition results were to be announced. Leandro was very nervous and hardly slept the night before. Ten minutes before the start, he logged into the online conference where the competition organizers were to announce the winner. Sitting in front of the computer screen, the young man felt his hands trembling. Leandro desperately wanted to win but wasn't sure he had succeeded. However, all his fears were unfounded. The organizer solemnly announced his name. The young man couldn't believe his luck at first. I did it, he thought. The wedding will happen. As soon as the conference ended, Leandro dressed and rushed to the jewelry store to buy an engagement ring for Beatrice. He chose the most beautiful and expensive ring and paid for it with a credit card. The salesperson placed the ring in a velvet box of milk-white color, adorned with a scarlet rose. Now Leandro was ready to propose to Beatrice. He invited her to the same restaurant where they had their first date and solemnly presented her with the ring. The girl couldn't hold back her tears. She had waited so long for this moment. Sometimes Beatrice even doubted if Leandro truly loved her. But now all her doubts were gone. Her beloved finally proposed. Beatrice was over the moon with happiness. At last, I will meet your father, the girl said when the initial excitement had settled down. Sometimes it feels like you're hiding him from me. Leandro was terribly embarrassed. Oh, dear. How could you think that, he exclaimed. It's just that my father is a very busy man. Always traveling. I rarely see him myself. I understand, sighed the girl. It's the same with my father. I miss him very much, but there's nothing I can do. Work is work. Leandro gently hugged his beloved and kissed her on the lips. But now you won't have to miss anyone because you'll have a husband, he smiled, and Beatrice laughed joyfully in response. They walked in the park for a long time, where part of their first date took place, reminiscing about how they met. Leandro told Beatrice how he was afraid to approach her, and Matteo encouraged him. That was very funny, Beatrice said with a smile. The young couple remembered the pleasant past and dreamed about the future until the stars appeared in the sky. Then Leandro took Beatrice home by taxi and walked back to his place. The young man was very happy. The active preparation for the wedding began. Beatrice was looking for a white wedding dress with her best friends. While Leandro took care of other things, he found a place for the ceremony and started thinking about where they would live after the wedding. He decided that it would be best to rent a beautiful studio in the city center for the first few months. Leandro calculated that the money should be enough for the first three months. He hadn't thought about what would happen next yet. Finally, the wedding day arrived. Leandro got up early to get ready. He took a shower and went to a stylist to get his hair styled. Then he returned home and put on a new suit he had bought especially for the occasion. Looking at himself in the mirror, the young man sighed sadly. The thing was, he hadn't told his father and brothers, who lived in the village, about the wedding. Leandro understood well that if they came, his deception would be immediately exposed. 
He decided to tell Beatrice that his father was abroad on very important business and couldn't make it to the ceremony due to bad weather. Spraying himself with the expensive perfume that his beloved had given him, Leandro went to his own wedding. The bride's guests were already gathered, and on the groom's side, there were only Matteo and a few close friends from university. Everyone found this extremely strange, but no one asked Leandro anything. Finally, the music started, and Beatrice appeared, escorted by her father. The girl was very beautiful. The long flared dress perfectly accentuated her slim figure. Beatrice's hair was styled into a voluminous hairstyle adorned with fresh flowers. She carried a beautiful bouquet. Leandro couldn't take his eyes off his beloved. She was so stunning. Beatrice smiled tender. Elle wired him from beneath her veil, and the young man smiled back at her. The girl and her father approached, and the wedding ceremony began. Both the groom and the bride expressed their consent, and they were declared husband and wife. In front of the admiring relatives and friends, Leandro kissed his newlywed wife, and everyone began to congratulate them, throwing flower petals. First came Beatrice's parents, then close relatives, and then friends. When it was the turn of Leandro's acquaintances, one of his old friends aloud wondered why his father was not at the ceremony. The young man wanted to remain silent, but Beatrice said, Leandro's father couldn't fly in from abroad. The weather didn't allow it. A puzzled friend looked at Leandro in surprise. I thought he didn't have money for travel, especially abroad. Did he sell the house in the village? Another friend joined the conversation. Leandro tried to give signals, but none of his friends understood. Beatrice frowned, and her husband blushed deeply with tension. What are they talking about? The girl turned to the young man. He just shrugged, unable to meet her eyes. Are you hiding something from me, Leandro? Beatrice asked suspiciously. You said you were the son of a wealthy man who owns a million dollar business. But according to your friends, your father is poor and lives in the village? Leandro realized it was time to face the music. How sad that it had to happen right at the wedding. And he had been so happy. Now he would have to lose Beatrice forever. Listen, dear. I'll explain everything to you now. But Leandro didn't have time to say anything. From somewhere in the very back, an elderly man in an expensive suit stood up. He had a thick beard with streaks of gray and intelligent brown eyes. A gold watch glistened on his wrist. It was clear that this man was quite well off and wealthy. He walked straight towards the newlyweds. Leandro, my son, here I am. I decided to surprise you. With these words, the man hugged the astonished young man tightly. His old friends were just as surprised as Leandro, but this time they preferred to remain silent. Is this your father? Beatrice was amazed. Leandro looked equally surprised and mumbled something incoherent in response. Of course, I am his father, the man interjected into their conversation. Pleased to meet you, Jose Rodriguez. Thank heavens, I managed to make it to my son's wedding. I had to call in a private jet because they weren't letting passenger flights out of the airport. I arrived a bit late, so I sat at the back to avoid causing a commotion. And he smiled at Beatrice with the most charming smile. The girl couldn't resist his charm and smiled back. By the way, who said I live in a village? What kind of jokes are these, senors? The man cast a stern glance at Leandro's friends. Leandro himself didn't understand anything at all. Was this a prank? It wasn't until his gaze fell on Matteo, who was quietly laughing into his hand, that he realized everything. So, his friend had hired someone to play the role of his father? How resourceful of him! Leandro mentally thanked Matteo for the favor. But if the young man knew how it would all turn out, he wouldn't have been so quick to rejoice. It seemed Beatrice had stopped doubting and was now listening attentively to what the supposed Jose Rodriguez was telling her. Leandro surreptitiously wiped the sweat from his forehead. It looked like his exposure was once again postponed indefinitely. Finally, Leandro's father let the girl go, and her friends immediately pulled her away for photographs. 
He turned to the young man, his charming smile faded slightly, replaced by a serious and even business-like expression. I hope I was useful to you, he said with a slight bow. Leandro looked at him in surprise. This man clearly carries some kind of secret, flashed through the young man's mind. And his intuition was 100% correct. A moment later, Leandro felt a firm rectangular piece of cardboard in his hand. Xavier Silva, entrepreneur, the young man read. Please call me right after the honeymoon. We have something to discuss, said the man who pretended to be the young man's father quickly. Then he hurriedly disappeared into the elegantly dressed crowd of guests. Leandro didn't even have time to blink before Xavier was out the door. Something ached desperately inside him, but the young man quickly pushed away the unpleasant feeling. Well, buddy? Mateo approached the young man. Did I save you well? Leandro just nodded in response. The heavy feeling that he owed someone something did not hurry to leave him. However, the wedding festivities soon engulfed Leandro, and he temporarily forgot about the strange man. Right after the celebration, the young couple headed to the airport to fly to a resort, paid for by the young wife's father as a wedding gift to his beloved daughter. The honeymoon was easy and carefree. The newlyweds enjoyed every moment spent together. But all good things come to an end, and the young couple returned home. They moved into a new apartment, and Beatrice returned to work. Leandro, however, was in no hurry to go back to his old job. He understood that he couldn't continue working there. The salary was too small to keep pretending he was the son of a millionaire. He needed to come up with something and make a change. But Leandro didn't get the chance to do so. On the second morning after returning from the resort, he received a message on his phone. My dear named son, it seems you have completely forgotten about me. Leandro felt a chill inside. He immediately knew who the author of the message was, and the same feeling he had experienced at the wedding suddenly resurfaced. With trembling hands, Leandro typed a reply, I haven't forgotten, just been busy. Can you come to my office today at noon? Came the new message. Leandro really didn't want to respond, but something told him it was necessary. Yes. What's the address? He asked in his reply. A few moments later, Xavier Silva sent the young man the address of his office. Leandro sighed and began to get ready. He took a shower, put on a suit, and left the house. The stranger's office was not far from the center where the newlyweds now lived, so the young man decided to walk there. The journey took him no more than 20 minutes. Seeing the necessary building, Leandro doubted if he had come to the right place. He remembered his stand-in father as a wealthy man, but the building where his company seemed to be located was very ordinary. No one would have thought that the office of such a rich person could be here. Maybe his impressive outfit was just for show? Leandro thought. He was about to find out. The young man entered and climbed the old, shabby staircase as the building was old and lacked an elevator. On the second floor, Leandro saw a door with a neat sign bearing the company's name, Edelweiss. A company with such a name could deal in anything from cosmetic and advertising services to selling live flowers. Leandro took a deep breath and pulled the door open. There was an unpleasant creak and the young man found himself at the threshold of a spacious, bright office. At the desk against the far wall sat a pretty secretary in a grass green shirt. The walls were adorned with paintings and photographs of shoots and sprouts, as well as different types of soil. Good afternoon, senor, the girl greeted him with a smile. How can I help you? Good afternoon, Leandro replied. I have an appointment with senor Silva. Very well, the secretary replied. Senor Silva will be here in a minute. In the meantime, you can wait in his office and I will bring you some drinks. Juice, water, coffee? Espresso, please, Leandro requested. The girl got up from her desk and led the young man to a door leading to the adjacent room. This was the boss's office. Leandro entered and sat in the chair opposite the desk. Meanwhile, the secretary was busy making coffee. Leandro looked around the office's interior. It was dominated by green tones, which calmed the young man's agitated mind. 
The secretary returned with a cup of coffee on a tray. She placed the steaming beverage in front of the young man, and at that very moment, the office owner walked in. His graying hair was neatly combed back, his beard tidy and well-groomed. Today, the man was not wearing a suit. He had on simple gray jeans and a mint-colored shirt. However, Leandro could confidently say that the stranger's clothes were not cheap. A gold watch still gleamed on his wrist. So, it wasn't just a masquerade, the young man thought. This Senor Silva is indeed wealthy. I am pleased to welcome you to my humble professional abode, the man smiled warmly. How was your honeymoon with your lovely young wife? Leandro didn't want to respond in the same cheerful spirit. He wasn't inclined towards heartfelt conversations. The young man understood perfectly well that all the friendliness of the senor, in whose office he was now sitting, was feigned. So he muttered something indistinct in response. I see you don't want to go into details, Senor Silva noted. And I understand. Time, as they say, is money. Therefore, I propose we get straight to business. Leandro instinctively tensed. Senor Silva looked at him intently, and under his gaze, the young man wanted to shrink. As you have already understood, I know your secret, the man said bluntly. You pretend to be the son of a wealthy millionaire to keep your beloved. But, alas, you don't have the means for that. Your father is poor, lives in an old village house, and doesn't even know that you are married. You can't even remember the last time you visited him. You are very busy right now, looking for a job, aren't you? But not just any job, one that will allow you to continue deceiving your wife? Leandro couldn't bear to listen to what Mr. Silva was saying. He already felt like the worst scoundrel, and now it was all being spoken out loud. The young man gritted his teeth, cast a heavy glance at the man, and nodded. Excellent. Now that we've broadly outlined the situation, let's move on to finding a way out of it. The first and most obvious option is to tell your wife the whole truth. However, this decision could lead to your breakup. Do we want that? I think not. Leandro stared at the man without blinking. His coffee had long since gone cold. But there's always an alternative solution. What's the second option? Leandro remained silent, looking at Mr. Silva questioningly. What if you, a young and promising scientist, suddenly receive an interesting collaboration offer? A small company dealing in plant and soil fertilizers wants to bring to life an idea that has long been in its owner's head but can't be realized without your brilliant mind? What idea? asked Leandro. To create biorobots that would monitor soil conditions and improve its composition. Can you imagine what a breakthrough this would be in the fertilizer market? Biorobots that do everything for landowners and farmers. It would be a real sensation. Leandro pondered for a moment. But that's illegal. Such research and innovations should primarily be conducted at the state level, he said confidently. Mr. Silva smirked. Who's talking about legality here? He smiled a poisonous smile that made the young man's stomach churn. But where will you get the materials, samples, prototypes? All of this costs a fortune. Mr. Silva leaned forward and whispered conspiratorially. You will help me with that. You're my lucky card. It took a moment for Leandro to grasp the meaning of the man's words. But, what's so special about me, he muttered, as the full vile nature of Mr. Silva's plan dawned on him. You want, gasped Leandro. Exactly, the man confirmed with a nod. You work at the university where you're trusted. From there, you can unobtrusively obtain everything you need. But that's theft. Leandro protested. You could go to jail for that. It all depends on how carefully you operate, Mr. Silver replied. Leaning back in his chair, he did not take his piercing gaze off the young man, as if assessing him. Leandro felt nauseous. He wanted to leap from his chair, leave the office, and run away as far as possible. But he didn't move, as if Mr. Silva's heavy gaze pinned him in place. What do I get in return? I'll pay for your apartment, and you can indulge any whims of your spoiled wife. She's not spoiled. Leandro flared up. 
Mr. Silva squinted disdainfully. Is that so? Do you think she chose you out of love? She only wants your money. Oh yes, and comfort and luxury. That's all. In a fit of rage, Leandro jumped to his feet. You don't even know her. She's not like that. Beatrice. She's different, the young man exclaimed passionately. Then why not go and confess everything to her? Mr. Silva asked mockingly. His gaze was again fixed on the young man's face. It felt as if he was enjoying the sight of his helplessness, like a fisherman watching a fish caught in a net. Leandro said nothing. He understood that Mr. Silva was right. Beatrice would hardly stay with him if she learned the whole truth. All right, I agree to your terms, the young man said submissively, sitting back down. Excellent, Mr. Silva responded concisely. I'll call the lawyer now to formalize our agreement. Really? Leandro smirked. So I'll be stealing for you legally? Mr. Silva gave him a dazzling smile. I like to do everything by the book, he said. An hour later, Leandro left Mr. Silva's office and headed home. It felt to the young man as if someone had tied a heavy stone around his neck. How could one innocent lie go so far? Leandro thought gloomily. He recalled the evening it all began, and... Mateo, the young man suddenly exclaimed. He must have told everything to that guy. Upon entering his apartment, Leandro hastily dialed his old friend's number. Mateo picked up after the first ring. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Mateo cheerfully exclaimed. How could you? Leandro growled into the phone. You set me up. What happened? Mateo was frightened. That guy from the wedding. The one who pretended to be my father. Where did you find him? Mateo sounded confused. What happened? He asked. Never mind, Leandro muttered. Answer the question. Where did you find him? For a while, I worked at his office. They paid me well. You know, they value their employees. And Mr. Silva seemed so charming. So I told him about you and your difficult situation. I asked him to help. Mateo nervously chuckled. What did you tell him about me? Leandro snapped at him. Nothing special, his friend replied, and after a moment's thought, he added, I just said you're a great guy and a very cool specialist. Leandro understood everything. Apparently, Mateo had let it slip to Senor Silva that he was working with cutting-edge technology at one of the country's most advanced universities, and the man instantly formed a plan. Thanks, friend, you really helped, grumbled Leandro. What happened? Mateo persisted. It's not important anymore, Leandro said and disconnected without saying goodbye. He was very angry and depressed. When Beatrice came home, Leandro's mood didn't improve. What happened, dear? The girl immediately sensed something was wrong. Nothing, sweetheart, Leandro tried to smile at her, but Beatrice could not be fooled. I can see you're upset, she said, gently touching his forehead. Maybe you're sick? I'm fine, he dismissed. He sat Beatrice on his lap and kissed her gently. But she pulled away. No, something is definitely wrong. You even smell of hidden sadness, she said insistently. Tell me now. There should be no secrets between us. Leandro bitterly smiled. If only he could. It's just a headache, he tried to excuse himself. But Beatrice still looked at him distrustfully, and an idea formed in her mind. The next day, Leandro went to Senor Silva's office, where he was shown the secret laboratory in the basement where he was to work. The sight of this place was depressing, but Leandro reluctantly began his new duties. A little over a week passed. Leandro came to the lab every day and worked until late at night. He had a strange feeling. Perhaps it was the stale air in the basement, but he developed a paranoia. When he left Senor Silva's building, he felt like he heard footsteps behind him. But when he turned around, no one was there. He began to think he was going crazy when one evening Senor Silva himself came down to the basement. 
How's it going, young scientist? He inquired. Leandro showed the preliminary results of what he had managed to do in a week. Very good, praised Senor Silva. Now, the only thing left is to bring the prototypes and samples from your university lab. Leandro hesitated. This part of the deal bothered him the most. Are you sure that's necessary? He asked, though he knew the answer. Yes, I'm sure, replied the man, his voice cold as steel. The next day, at lunch, Leandro went to the university. He was warmly welcomed, his colleagues had missed him. He did his usual work and stayed in the lab until late. When everyone else had gone home, Leandro took his personal card, which could unlock the cabinet where the prototypes were stored, and brought it to the reader. The door opened with a soft beep. Leandro took a deep breath and reached for the samples when he suddenly heard a noise behind him. He turned in fear and saw, Beatrice, what are you doing here, dear? He exclaimed. I should ask you the same, she retorted, hands on her hips. I, I'm working, he admitted. Beatrice glared at him angrily. It looks like you're stealing university property, she cried indignantly. Leandro felt like a deflated balloon. He sank wearily into the nearest chair and closed his eyes. So, you know everything, he whispered. Beatrice came closer and sat next to him. Taking his hand, she said softly, When I saw you in that strange state a week ago, I decided to hire a private detective to find out what was happening. I'm sorry, but I didn't know what else to do. The detective told me where you went every day, and I looked into Xavier Silva's company, which astonishingly resembles your biological father, Jose Rodriguez. Leandro flinched and, opening his eyes, looked at Beatrice pleadingly. Then I realized something was wrong. Now, I want you to tell me the whole truth, she finished, gazing intently yet trustfully at her husband. Leandro took a deep breath and began his story. He told Beatrice everything from the beginning, feeling his ears burn with embarrassment. Speaking, he couldn't look her in the eye, only the touch of her hand gave him some encouragement. When he finished, a long silence hung in the room. Forgive me, dear, Leandro said. I got myself into a mess. But it was only because I was terribly afraid of losing you. Beatrice gently touched his cheek. Did you really think I was with you only because your father is a millionaire? Leandro looked at her. Deep down, I feared that he admitted. What a fool you are, Beatrice said tenderly. Leandro, I don't care how much money your father has. Yes, I'm used to comfort, but I make a good living myself. I don't need anyone's money. Leandro could hardly believe his ears. So, you're not going to leave me after everything I've done, he asked cautiously. How could I leave you, Beatrice replied, when I love you. Leandro, hardly believing his happiness, hugged his beloved tightly. I love you so much too, dear, he whispered, kissing her soft hair. They sat for a while, hugging, and then Beatrice stood up. Did Senor Silva blackmail you? she asked. Leandro nodded. What connects you to his company? she asked. We signed a contract, he admitted. It needs to be annulled, Beatrice said decisively. You shouldn't be involved with him. His company has a terrible reputation. My father told me that. I know, Leandro nodded. He wanted me to steal prototypes for his lab. Beatrice covered her mouth in horror. What a nightmare. And did you do it? She exclaimed. Leandro shook his head. Fortunately, I didn't get the chance, he replied. You caught me in the act. Beatrice sighed in relief. Thank heavens. I'll call my father right away and ask him to have his lawyers handle your case. Annul the contract. It's nothing for them. Leandro still couldn't believe his luck. Is this nightmare really over? He asked. Beatrice came closer and gently ran her hand through his hair. I hope so. And I also hope you'll never lie to me again. I swear, darling, Leandro said and kissed her. A couple of days later, the contract was annulled and the young couple could breathe easily. Leandro found a new job and continued his postgraduate studies. 
He and Beatrice found another apartment, not as luxurious, but cozy and beautiful. From then on, the young couple lived in harmony, with no more secrets between them.